So I'm officially upgrading my M1 Max 16 inch MacBook Pro to the M3 Max 16 inch MacBook Pro. And I know I said on my Dana Life video, someone like me who already have the M1 Max already, this isn't necessarily an upgrade that I need. So you guys are probably wondering why now? Waited this long to finally upgrade, why now? Well, recently I just signed up for my American Express Platinum card and you need to spend a certain amount to qualify a welcome bonus. So in this case, again, 200,000 points. I already have amazing cameras. I ordered some lenses. So the missing piece is a more beefier MacBook. Believe it or not, it is an upgrade going from an M1 Max to an M3 Max. You are getting that three nanometer chip, so the chips are getting smaller, which means it's gonna be more efficient. You are getting more GPU cores, more CPU cores, of course, and more prominently, I wanted to upgrade the RAM. So in this case, I went with a 64 gigabyte RAM and two terabyte of SSD storage versus my M1 Max, my previous MacBook, being one terabyte of SSD and 32 gigabytes of RAM. So yeah, so I was running low on storage and the RAM, I'm starting to notice that 32 gigabytes of RAM, I'm starting to hit that threshold. Just moving that barrier even further, I decided to go with 64 gigabytes of RAM and I would have went with 128 gigs. That would push back the shipping time altogether and I am traveling to Florida soon. So I wanna be here when I get my MacBook, so that's why I went with 64. And in terms of the SSD storage, I didn't really mind it too much because I'm editing from an external hard drive, in this case, an NVMe SSD enclosure, which is blazing fast. Shout out to Brandon Bush for recommending that. And yeah, so that's why I went with two terabytes. Two terabytes is the sweet spot nowadays. And I do have it right here in the background. It's official. It's my primary computer right now. That's where I'm gonna get all my work done, all the video work done. I do notice the performance right away. Believe it or not, the M3 Max is equivalent to an M2 Ultra. It's like neck on neck, if not very, very similar in terms of performance, which is very impressive. I can only imagine how the M4 Ultra is gonna be. Now, I would've got a Mac Studio, but we're still on the M2 Max and M2 Ultra. I'm waiting for Apple to refresh those. Please, Apple, don't forget about the Mac Studios. I say all of that just to say, if you're still looking forward to buying a MacBook, which by the way, Apple still has their back to school discount, which is ending on, and not to mention with the M4 series, yes, it's gonna be faster, but how much faster are we getting these things? I think it's still gonna be on the same three nanometer process. Yes, we might get a little bit more cores to the GPU and maybe even the CPU, but we got a little bit of a teaser with the iPad Pro M4. For now, I think it's still a great time to buy a MacBook only if you need it. If you're still on Intel, which means the MacBooks that came out before 2020, I still recommend to get Apple Silicon. It's literally gonna change your life. I'm not even, I'm not even joking. It's gonna change your life. The fans, you're barely gonna hear them. The performance is gonna be day and night and just everything just moves more efficient. The battery life is gonna be better. Now, if you have an M1 or M2, I would still recommend waiting out for the M4 to see if that's gonna be a big difference. But the reason why I got an M3, don't be like me. I just wanna make sure I'm getting, get the work done quickly. I don't wanna have any bottlenecks, even though the M1 Max has been good to me, really good for that matter. I just want something that's faster, more RAM, more storage, and I just needed something to uh, accommodate those welcome bonus. Because believe it or not, 200,000 points of American Express points is $2,000. Plus, if I trade in my M1 Max, Apple is going to give me $1,167, I believe. That's not too bad, even though when this came out, it was like $4,000. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks a lot, Apple. So really and truly, it is kind of like $3,000 off. So that's why I was like, you know what? Why not? Wait, right, hold on. Let me, let me fix the light. And I don't like it when it's like this. And I only had my M1 Max since release, which is making it three years. Three years later, it is still a very, very good machine. For crying out loud, MKBHD, Marquez Brownlee, is still using the M1 Max. Some of your favorite creators, Austin Evans, still using the M1 Max, because it's just, it's that good. And it's not worth spending all that money for a small difference of an upgrade. Now, yes, it is, it is raising charts, it is, better in every way, but how fast do you really want your computer to be? I mean, if something's already fast three years later, 
how can you improve from the first gen M1 or even M2 series? How can you make it such a big difference that you want to get people to upgrade? I would say maybe put in an OLED display when entice some people to upgrade, maybe even add in cellular support to be able to go anywhere around the world and still be connected without Wi-Fi. I think that would be a nice selling point. You know, maybe give us more IO. <laughs> I mean, I know Apple is kind of hesitant on doing that, but give us more Thunderbolt instead of just the three. Face ID will be nice on the MacBooks too. We have the notch, so why not give us Face ID? And just to name a few, I'm pretty sure I can think of more, but features like those will entice people to upgrade. So, and you never know. You never know with the M4 or even the M5, we may get everything. We might get all of those features. You never know. And also too, the longer you hold on to your old devices, the value is just going to degrade. So yeah, so that was the reason why I decided to buy my M3 Max MacBook Pro. And believe it or not, I didn't even review the M3 Max when it first came out. I only reviewed the M3 Pro because I remember the Max model was delayed. It was pushed back and I wanted to get a day in the life video for you guys. And I was also heading to Toronto, so I couldn't wait. So yeah, this is my first time experiencing the M3 Max MacBook Pro. So yeah, that is basically it. I love it. It is fast. This is going to be my MacBook for the next three to five years, which is basically around my upgrade cycle for MacBooks. If you're looking forward to buying a MacBook and you still have Intel, pfft, get yourself an M1 or M2 or M3. It really doesn't even matter which one you go with at this point.